Good morning, everybody, and a happy Friday morning to you. Once again, we have a lot to cover. But first, I want to shout out a thank you. Here we go. A big thank you to Ann B. for sending cat food off my Amazon wish list for Tigger and Toodles. A big thank you to Wyatt for sending me a lip gloss off my Amazon wish list I wanted to try. Then I got a lovely card uh, from a person that's actually in London, but she's in the United States visiting. Look at that penmanship, man. And she bought stuff for me at Buckingham Palace, and so she sent it over. The butter cookies, which by the way, oh my God, they're like addictive. You can't stop eating them. The Buckingham Palace shower cap. <laughs> I absolutely will, will be using that. And the Buckingham Palace hand towels, gorgeous. And yes, I will be taking, as you requested, the thing that you put in the envelope to my local house of worship. And thank you. One more quick notice for you guys. I passed over to 77,900. At one point, I was at 77,920 something, and YouTube has been calling people off my channel, and I've been flipping up to nine, back to eight, up to nine, back to eight. I'm sorry, you guys, truly. All right, let's move on now. Now, really quickly, I'm going to go back and do a quick rundown on what happened last year when Harry and Meghan had their, and I'm air quoting, their card chase, because there might be some details that you have forgotten, or maybe there's something that you missed. So we're going to do a quick recap of this entire freaking mess, okay? So let's jump in and cover it. Let's go. Remember, Megan was there to pick up some award that Glow, her friend Glow, was giving her. And even though they were staying at a place that was literally five minutes away, just a few blocks over, they decided that they were going to drive around because they didn't want people to know where they were staying. Omid Scobie, of course, comes out in their defense. It was a terrifying car chase. And of course, Harry and Megan put out a statement of their own. Well, it didn't take long for the pictures to come out. And the first thing I noticed is that in every single picture, Megan is smiling like the cat that ate the canary. And that's because in my opinion, this was a complete setup. The only person who didn't seem to be in on the joke was Harry. Harry looks absolutely stricken and in distress in every picture. Personally? I believe they were totally screwing with Harry's head. It wasn't long before Omid Scobie and Richard Eden then struck out saying that the royal family hadn't been in touch with Harry and Meghan. How they would know that, no idea. People on Twitter brought up the fact that this was going on while Harry and Meghan are suing for their security. It was not long after that that the police actually came out and said that it was not a catastrophic chase. You guys, there's cameras on every corner. There's a reason why they call it gridlock traffic. At some point, somebody found the taxi driver and he spoke out and said that they were only in his cab for 10 minutes and there was no chase. She was actually caught on street cam getting into the taxi. She was not at the police station. Then the mayor came out with a statement. I would find it hard to believe that there was a two hour high speed chase. So it's pretty obvious the mayor didn't believe them. And then Harry and Meghan's people put out a notice. They didn't want any pictures put out anywhere. They're trying to control the narrative. Then Backrid came out with their own statement claiming that Harry and Meghan's security team was driving in a reckless manner. So since everybody was coming out with statements basically calling Harry and Meghan a liar, Omid Scobie had to come out with something else. I think it's important to remember that the statements that we get from the mayor, from the NYPD, these are sort of very much about the facts. What we heard from Harry and Meghan's team was also an emotional statement. This was a couple that I understand still this morning was shaken up. So it wasn't about the facts. It was about how Harry and Meghan felt. People asked if they were in danger, why didn't they go into the police station? Why didn't they pull into the Carlisle Hotel? We then found out from the actual police that Harry and Meghan tried to stay at the Carlisle, you know, which was Diana's favorite hotel, and they asked for a discount, and the hotel said no, so they didn't stay there. Now, in the middle of all this, he started invoking the memory of Diana. Now, this was the closest I've ever felt to understanding how she died. Omid Scobie then came back out again. And he started to attack the king and William. They're terrible people. How dare they not contact Prince Harry after the car chase that took Princess Diana? They're just terrible. Of course, we found out later on from Neil Sean that that was a lie, that King Charles was all over what was happening. So what really happened during their chase? 
They took a circular route from 23rd Street to 96th Street. Ended up at the 19th Precinct, where they then went to a yellow cab, which circled the block and took them back to the 19th Precinct. But remember, they never went in to the police station. Then it was reported Harry and Megan never said it was a high-speed chase. It was the horrible media who said that. But remember, it was their mouthpiece, Omid Scobie, who said that the chase went up to 80 miles an hour. You guys also noticed that Harry was taping all of that with his phone, but he never released the footage. The photographers then put out a statement for themselves. And what they said was, this was fake news. We don't waste hours doing this kind of stuff. And if these people were unsafe, they could have gone to the police station. So it wasn't long that a video came out from Germany. And since, of course, I have a native German speaker in the house, I had it translated. Do you guys remember seeing this? Security has blocked the street. He's telling paparazzi to get back. And the police are saying, what is this? Police officer says, oh, no, you come with me. And the other police officer, the young lady, walks over and says, what's going on? And the man says to the officer, we're paparazzi. And then he says, just letting you know I'm recording this, but we're paparazzi and that guy is crazy. He says he's been driving crazy the entire time. And we know that Harry is used to zipping through traffic, you know, back when he was in the UK. And I think that's what his security was trying to do. But in New York, it is illegal to block roads like that without a permit. And Harry and Meghan did not have a permit. Now, here's what happened from the opposite side. Remember, the SUV is still catty-cornered, and you see that there's only two paparazzi around the taxi. You see that? Two people in red. So you pull up. They're sitting there in the taxi. The SUV that was following them is sitting catty-cornered and is blocking the traffic. And like I just said, that was the problem that the police had. The police were trying to get through the street, and they couldn't because Harry and Megan's SUV had blocked the road. When the cab finally moves, what you notice is that the police go up a little bit and turn right. They go down a side route while the cab goes straight. And that's because Harry and Meghan were blocking the road. So when you read this and you realize they were only staying two blocks away, you realize something wasn't right. Now, eventually, an article did come out saying that the NYPD, according to the NYPD, they were chased. However, several YouTubers have requested a copy of that letter through the Freedom of Information Act. And suddenly, the letter is nowhere to be found. And the reason we know about this letter is because it was entered into Harry's UK court case by Harry and Meghan. What did I tell you? They're gonna, they were going to try to use it for their court case. And this case, they said, has been thoroughly probed by the police force, the Manhattan DA, and there will be no charges. They also said that Harry's security contributed to the conditions. They were found to be reckless and unacceptable because they didn't adhere to the NYPD proposed stop. Harry was demanding somebody be arrested, but they said, listen, that requires evidence and we don't have it, so we're not arresting anybody. But the official letter was sent to the Metropolitan Police of London in September by the NYPD because they wanted the London High Court to consider it. So if anything, that just tells you this was a complete setup as I said it was. Now, how does this go into today's case? Despite the fact that it really upset a lot of New Yorkers and wasted police resources, apparently since Harry is going back to New York in September, he's going to be receiving additional security because of the supposed catastrophic, you know, car chase. Who do you think is going to be paying for that? I believe it's New Yorkers. If Harry wants extra protection, why isn't Harry paying for that extra protection himself. He and Megan have made over $60 million in the last few years. Why aren't they paying for it? Why does New York have to pay for it? I mean, let's be honest though, NYPD did say that for future visits, they were going to give extra security for Harry and Megan at the cost of the taxpayers. That just seems so unfair. And we all know why he's going there. He's going there because he's trying to force a meeting with William, which, come to find out, isn't going to happen. William, we found out, was not due to attend the event because there's other things going on. Now, the, and of course, they're saying there's going to be speculation he pulled out because of Harry, but that's not true. He was never supposed to be there. So, you know, Harry's wasted his time. 
You know, these articles really get me that now they're not going to have an awkward run-in. They wouldn't have had a run-in at all. William was going to be at one specific hotel, and then he was going to be at the Earthshot Prize, and then he would have flown home. Harry is the one that would have had an awkward run-in, because I guarantee you, people would have come out in droves to see William. I don't believe they would come out in droves to see Harry. That's just my personal opinion. Now, there is no royal family video today due to lack of content. So there are three videos, but none of them are royal family. So hit the like and the subscribe button. I know, I know. Then go down into the description box and hit the link to follow me over to video two. Let's go.